There's something fishy going on around here. <laughs> anyway, we're going to do a little bit of kitchen table wiring project today. We've we got a little project going on. We're making some jumper cables. we got five black, five red. And we have 18 inches of uh, 14 gauge wire, I think. I don't know. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to strip off each end about half to three quarters of an inch so we got enough bare wire and then we're going to feed it up through the end of this thing through a little loop-de-loop -loop. you can kind of see it there and have it come out again and then get tightened down at the screw and then we'll have one end done and if we're really lucky we'll remember to keep these on the wiring so let's get started here So now that we have our wire stripped and it inside our jumper connector, we are going we've got it threaded through that little loop and now we're going to put the screw back in and see how it all looks put together on this one end. We have everything hooked up. We've got the wire through the little eye and around the screw and our sleeve put back on. You can see the finished result. I don't know whether I'm going to use some kind of heat shrink tubing or just plain old electrical tape to seal that so it doesn't run the risk of shorting against the ground or another source of power. Anyway, let's take this sleeve off. And you can kind of see how I did it here. I ran it up through this part here, through the opening, and through that little through this part here, through the eyelet, and then through the opening, and then around that screw in the direction that the screw tightened down so the wire would be pulled against the screw as it tightened down. Now, we're going to move on to the other end, which will be a red end. So now we've got our red end done, and we cut off about three quarters to an inch worth of insulation Poked it through everything, got it tied around the screw neatly, and then we put our sleeve on. I almost forgot to put the sleeve in the wiring, but off I had to point that out, that I was making a tremendous mistake. So, we got one, one jump of wire done, so it's now time to do the other four. Wish me luck. <laughs> That's about how much wire you're going to need to go through the this metal sleeve there, through the trap, and then up, over, and around the screw. That's probably about an inch, maybe an inch and an eighth or a quarter, if you're going to get really down to the nitty gritty. Alright, so once we, I have all of the, all of the little things made, I'm going to find my electrical tape, and I'm going to tape over where the exposed wire is, down here on both pairs, both set of alligator clips. And that might finish it up. I might just leave that alone. I don't know. Anyway, I got five multicolored alligator jumper wires now, alligator clip style jumper wires. So I want to know if my subscribers have made any, any of their own jumper wires or they bought their own from like Napa or AutoZone or O'Reilly's. I would have bought my own. Then I could have had like a, a 10 foot or a 20 foot pair. But that the stuff that they sell in the stores was awfully thin wire. And I didn't want, I didn't know if it could handle, you know, like a big load, you know, like testing out a blower motor or something. I didn't know if it could handle that. So the one thing I do want to do is I want to, I have a good car battery right here. It's for the Hendrickson project, so I'm getting ready to do that. This little guy's expensive. So I want to get myself a headlight or something that I can test with my jumper cables and verify that all, all of them work. Once you have your jumper cables hooked up to a suitable battery, one that's going to have small enough, small enough terminals on it to actually let your jumper cables get a good grip on them, You've got it hooked up to your 12 volt source to whatever that may be. Mine is a little roadside hazard light that my dad got me. And you can see it's working 
So we know our jumper cables work.